Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quarkus application. My name is Daniel O. Oh. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major. This video showcases how to render your front end application like a web application using Quarkus Qt tampering engine. So Quarkus Qt is tampering engine designed specifically with the Quarkus need. The usage of the reflection is minimized to reduce the size of every images, but also uh, the API or the Quarkus Q uh, combine both imperative and non-blocking React style of coding. Particularly uh, when you run the Quarkus demo, all files are located in under resource and temporary directory, uh, watch it and for change and modification are uh, immediately visible. This is one of the great feature of the Quarkus Q templating engine uh, to make it easier to implement a front end application. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start uh, create a new Quarkus application using Quarkus 2 on VS Code here. So we're gonna define some artifact ID and a group name and a package name, etc. I'm gonna use the default uh, name here uh, to provide the Quarkus 2, and I'm gonna store my uh, Quarkus project, my temp directory. Okay, here's my Quarkus application just uh, generated. And then the first step, we're gonna go to the Palm XML to make sure the which Quarkus version we're gonna to use. The 1.9.0 uh, is a latest version of Quarkus. And then uh, just uh, uh, open and take a look at that uh, generated new uh, simple uh, Quarkus application classes here. The rest easy. Let's just uh, uh, explore the rest endpoint. Let's uh, start the Quarkus application runtime uh, using the Quarkus Zen mode. Uh, this is uh, the starting point to start uh, to developing your Quarkus application with the live coding functionality. Pretty cool, pretty easy. Try to access the endpoint to make sure this application working properly. And go to hello uh, endpoint, and then we gotta return text the hello uh, just so we implement this code. Okay, pretty cool. So what are we gonna do next step? So we're gonna add a new extension to use Quarkus Q templating engine. So in order to do that, we're gonna open our Quarkus tools and uh, uh, add the Q templating extension, but also we need to use uh, the Q uh, REST EG extension as well because uh, we're gonna uh, export this endpoint. Uh, we're gonna export this application as RESTful API. Okay. In the meantime, the old necessary dependency already pulled on my local machine, but also the dependency defined my Palm XML automatically, and try to define to new endpoint like a hello. And then we're gonna add a new CDI bin using uh, inject annotation, uh, like a template, uh, the hello. And this template hello name uh, should be uh, equivalent to, to your uh, uh, resource name, like HTML file or text file. And we, we need to also define new get method uh, with the return code, uh, return type the template instance to add a new uh, template resource or with some specific name, like a key value. In this case, the name is the key and value uh, is uh, is the parameter name dynamically. You know, try to define your HTML file under uh, resources and temporary directory, and we, we can uh, dynamically rewrite, uh, uh, bind the name. So try to access the endpoint hello with a specific parameter, like a name equal my name is Daniel. And then the return is hello Daniel, just so we implement in our application. Pretty cool and pretty easy to implement your front end application. Let's try to add one more uh, uh, the uh, front end application uh, to uh, uh, store some uh, array list and return the array list with specific uh, specific uh, calculation. So we're gonna uh, define the Java class as Java bean like uh, with the price name attribute here. And then uh, the price is kind of product price, like uh, $10, $20, and uh, the name is a product name. Okay, try to create a new resource file here. So uh, add a new uh, endpoint, uh, just like the items. And then uh, we're gonna need to inject temporary as CDI bin with items, which means we're gonna use the same file name items.html, or you can use the txt uh, file name as well. And then we're gonna define uh, another get method with the return temporary instance type. 
And then we're gonna just define and add uh, some sample data with the array risk, uh, like uh, the product name and a price here. So for example, we're gonna add uh, one example data, like uh, uh, the price like uh, $10 and uh, product name like uh, Apple. And actually we can add a few more uh, the data here, like uh, orange and a pear with a different price like $15 and $30 here. Okay, and the return items, uh, and add the, we're gonna add the, uh, uh, we're gonna add uh, this uh, array list in our template, like items. And now let's try to add one more, the temporary extension method here. So this extension is validated against the item class, and obviously there is no such a property declared, which means we can still use this uh, discount price just like uh, the class property, such as the price or name. So this is one of the good features or well, really uh, beauty of the, the Quark, Quark SQ template uh, engine. Okay, try to create a new items HTML file, just like the same name of the template name. And uh, I just copy my uh, cheat sheet uh, to define an HTML file. And this is simple, easy. And I try to uh, print out the list uh, item and the prices here. And the one interesting step, we could still use the item dot discount prices just like a property, even though we define in our Java classes. Okay, try to access the item here, and now you can see the three uh, data apple, pear, orange with the discount price if the price is more than fifty dollars. Yeah, okay, pretty cool. So this is a really easy way to implement front end web application using Quark SQ templating engine. Thank you for watching and please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for the next practical example, technical demos. Have a good rest of the day.